Men are trash, so at least get some trash with money. Don't date any guy who isn't rich. My mom said for the millionth time as we ate our dinner one night, do you think that dad is trash? I asked. She laughed. <laughs> oh, definitely. Doesn't that make me half trash? Anyway, back to my point, Linda. These boys are nothing but stress. All they're going to do is break your heart, lie to you, and make you cry. And like they say, it's way more comfortable crying in a Mercedes Benz than it is on a bicycle. So make the right choices. I forbid you to bring any broke boys home. I want to know their parents' net worth, everything. Bonus points if they've already started their own business. I'll continue my story right after you like, share, and subscribe to this channel. After that, please hit that notification bell to make sure you never miss out on any more totally insane stories. If you're new here, you don't know what you've been missing, and you certainly don't want to miss any more. Okay, back to my story. Since I understand words, this was the first thing that my mom preached to me. Normal moms would teach their daughters about self-confidence, honesty, and that kind of stuff. Not mine. She was all about ensuring that I did not end up with a broke man who would ruin my life. When I was old enough to understand what she was talking about, I told her that we should probably judge people based on their personalities and not how much money they had. But she wasn't hearing any of it. After my mother's persuasive conversation, I went to my room to get ready for school the next day. I had no idea it would have been the day which would have changed my life completely. It started out as a normal, sunny day. I sat through the most boring assembly ever, while our school's principal went on and on about how important it was for us to respect our elders. After that, my first class was art. I was sitting in front of my huge canvas, trying to understand the messy abstract piece I had painted, when I smelled someone next to me. Now, I know that sounds weird, to smell someone before seeing them, but the cologne smelled so strong and expensive, I wondered who it could be. I looked left, then right, then behind me, and there he was. Hey, I'm Roger. I'm new here. He said, while winking. I sized him up and down. He was dressed like your typical trust fund baby. Ralph Lauren polo shirt, shorts that said, I'm too rich to care about fashion, and a pair of expensive boat shoes. He smelled divine. Your piece looks rather, uh, interesting. What is it? I looked at my piece of art again, then looked back at him and laughed. I don't know either. He stayed with me during art class, and we had lunch together that afternoon. I didn't know why he chose to follow me around when there were many other gorgeous girls in my class. So, why did you move here? My dad is William Green, and he's the CEO of a huge investment firm. He had to move here because they're opening a new branch. I didn't really want to move, but my dad said we had to. That night, I googled William Green and the investment firm and found out that his dad was not a millionaire. He was a billionaire. So this guy had all the qualities my mom demanded, and she'd definitely be happy if I brought him home. Don't get ahead of yourself, girl. You don't even know if he likes you. You've only known him for one day. He could be a serial killer. Or worse, poor, I thought. The next day, he was waiting for me at the entrance of our school. Hey, Linda. Wow, what a gentleman. A boy has never waited for me at school before, I thought. But instead, I said, hi. He was wearing another expensive outfit, and his smile was brighter than the sun. We didn't have the same classes that morning, so he asked me to meet him at lunchtime. Later, we sat together eating cafeteria pizza and drinking chocolate milk. So I got you a little something to thank you for welcoming me to this school. It isn't always easy to make a new friend so quickly, and well, I'd just like you to know I appreciate you. He handed me a little gift bag from Tiffany's. I opened it, and it was a beautiful tennis bracelet worth at least a thousand dollars. Oh my god! Roger! This is too expensive! I can't accept it! It's nothing. Come on. Are you forgetting that I'm a billionaire? You're not. Your dad is. Is he okay with you spending his money like this? Let's just say my weekly allowance is really good. Don't think too much about it. Please accept my gift. He smiled his charming smile. I was lost in his eyes for a few seconds. Then I snapped out of it and put the bracelet on my wrist. 
It was so shiny. Thank you, Roger. I appreciate it. By the next week, we decided to start dating. I didn't really have any other friends anyway, and neither did he. Almost every day, he'd give me little presents. Jewelry, perfume, clothes, hair accessories, and so much more. It reached a point where I had so much stuff, my mom began to ask questions. Are you using my credit card without permission? She asked one night. No, mom. Why would you ask such a question? Where are you getting all that expensive stuff? I know you can't afford it with the allowance I give you. Okay, well, there's something I haven't told you. I have a boyfriend now. His name is Roger. He buys me this stuff. Oh, wow. He must be rich then. He's rich, right? I told her all about his billionaire father, and her eyes lit up. Jackpot. So when am I going to meet him? Invite him over for dinner tomorrow night. The next day, I told Roger that I told my mom I had a boyfriend and that she wanted to meet him. He looked a bit uncomfortable at first, but he agreed. I just have something to do after school. Uh, after that, I'll call you and we can go to your house together. I wondered what he had to do, but I decided not to be too inquisitive. I didn't want him to think I was controlling or anything like that. The night went well. My mom seemed to like Roger a lot. She asked him all sorts of questions, and he seemed to have the right answers to everything. He was absolutely charming, and after he left, my mom was beaming. His clothes are really expensive. She started. And he smells divine. I mean, if I was your age. Mom, stop! I screamed, then laughed. <laughs> so you're happy I'm making good choices, right? Definitely. His father is a billionaire. It seems I've taught you well. A few months went by, and we continued growing in our relationship. I learned almost everything about him, and every time I learned something new, I fell deeper and deeper in love. There was just one thing, though. He never invited me to his house. I didn't know where he lived, and I never met anyone in his family. I found it weird that I'd introduced him to my mom and welcomed him into my life with open arms, but he hadn't done the same for me. Was he ashamed of me or something? I confronted him about it at lunchtime one day. How come you've never introduced me to your parents? Um, well, they're always busy. Most times I'm home alone. It's pretty lonely in that huge house all alone. I'm sure they're home sometimes. We've been dating for months, and I've never even seen where you live. I didn't know you felt that way. I'm starting to think you're ashamed of me. He looked really sad for a moment, then said, All right, how about this? You're coming to my house tomorrow after school. Even if no one is home, at least you'll know where I live. I'm sorry I made you feel that way. The next day, he was nervous all day. After school, it almost seemed like he was trembling. Are you scared about something? Listen, we don't have to do this if you aren't ready. I'm not scared, I'm just a bit, uh, cold. Let's go. My dad's driver couldn't make it today though, so we'll have to take the bus. Is that okay? Sure. We took about three buses, and then we had to walk about 10 minutes into a lane where it seemed that only really wealthy people lived. There were huge trees and houses with huge gardens which were widely spaced apart. Here it is, home sweet home. He said it like he was a bit uncertain of himself. I looked at the house, which was humongous and very modern. Oh, we'll have to go in through the back door because I forgot my key. We usually keep the back door open because there's no crime around here. I followed him, and we entered through the kitchen, which was half the size of my entire house. Whoa, somebody here really loves cooking, huh? He laughed and showed me around the house. My feet were hurting after. Where's your room? You didn't show me your room. Oh, it's upstairs. He led me to a big room upstairs. It looked almost like a hotel room. There were no posters and nothing in there that really expressed his personality. Then I looked on the wall and saw a picture in a frame. There was a middle-aged couple holding twins. Who were these people? Oh, nobody. This picture was already in the room when we moved in. I continued staring at the picture. Then I heard a car pull into the driveway. Looks like I'm finally going to get to meet one of your parents. He looked a bit uneasy. Uh -oh then took my hand and said, Okay, here's the thing. I didn't tell my parents I'm having a girl over, and I'm not exactly allowed to date. If they find out you're here, I'll be grounded for like a year. We have to leave, now. I followed him, and we left through the back door. We walked and took three buses back. Hey, do you mind if I stay for dinner tonight? Um, no, I don't mind. You're always welcome. I smiled, but I thought he was acting really weird. After dinner, he left, and my mom continued to beam with pride. 
I really like this one, honey. Yeah, but something weird happened earlier. Oh, look, he forgot his phone. I noticed that his phone was on the chair where he had been sitting. It must have fallen out of his pocket. Well, we'll just drive over there to bring it back to him. You do know where he lives, right? We got into the car, and I gave her the directions. We pulled up in front of the huge house about 45 minutes later. All the lights were on, and there were two cars parked in the driveway. We got out of our car and knocked on their front door. A well-dressed woman answered. Um, hi there. Can I help you? Oh, you must be Roger's mom. We came to return his phone. Roger? I think you have the wrong house, sweetie. I peeked inside and looked around. This was definitely the house I was in earlier. Is anyone else home? I asked, thinking that maybe the lady was mad. Harry, some crazy people are at the door. She shouted inside. A man came immediately. That's not William Green. My mom said, confused. My name is Harry, and this is my wife Cleo. Who are you looking for? I'm looking for Roger, my boyfriend. He lives here. No, he doesn't. You must have the wrong house. At that moment, Roger's phone rang. I picked it up. Hey, man, where are you? The voice on the other end said, Hey, I'm Roger's girlfriend and I have his phone. He forgot it. Can you tell me where I can bring it to him? Oh, yeah, um, sure. I'll send you the location right now. Check the messages. He said and hung up. My mom and I walked to our car and followed the directions on the map the caller had sent. After a few minutes, we ended up in place near a bridge. It was filled with homeless people. There were some tents and many cardboard boxes. Then I heard Roger's laugh. I was sure it was him. I walked over to a very big cardboard box. He was sitting in there with a middle-aged man. He saw me and stood up, startled. What are you doing here? The other man in the box said. Who is this pretty girl, son? That's your father? I thought you said your father was a billionaire named William Green. Tell me you all are just here feeding the poor. My mom screamed. The man looked very hurt. Linda, I'm sorry. I lied to you. This is where I really live, and that's my dad. The house I took you to earlier, well, I don't really know who lives there. I just walked around these neighborhoods for a few months, monitoring when people were and weren't home. I knew nobody would be there when we went. So, where did you get all that money to buy all these expensive gifts you get me? And all these clothes? How do you do it all? Well, there are some things I just can't tell you about yet. But I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. My mom was angrier than I was. She made a huge scene and then we left. I broke up with Roger, but not because my mom wanted me to. I continued to be his friend because I really did like him, but I didn't want to be with a guy who would lie to me. Honesty means more to me than money.